morning guys welcome back to another video with me you join me in the forest today with a very crazy and very excited Romy if you're new to my channel my name is Amy and I've been on a weight loss journey for the last couple of years and I follow the starch solution and I use the principles of low calorie density and I've lost 60 pounds in the process regained my health I've got loads and loads of energy and I eat massive portions of delicious food every single day without fail I am a foodie and you can be a volume eater and a foodie and still get and stay lean so um Romy and I are in the forest this morning we've just dropped Abe off at school and I really wanted to free free Romy because she has so much energy these days and I thought it'd be a lovely thing to start the mornings which is coming into the forest being in nature let her have a little bit of a wild time uh, thank you sweet pea is that is that for mommy are you a cute little birdie Off she goes, eh? But yeah, I wanted to chat to you guys a little bit about a couple of comments I've received on Instagram and here on YouTube about um, while I was away at the caravan place um, and how when everyone else went out for dinner, I decided not to go out for dinner and have the food that was there. I instead decided to have my own food and I had some before and I had some afterwards. Now, I, t I was chatting to my mum yesterday about this and it's really interesting. When people say, it's interesting when people say, um, that you can get like obsessed about food um, so obviously there's diff there's so many different levels of that so there's one thing to be obsessed about being lean and about losing weight and I don't think that is particularly healthy I mean unless obviously I mean it's 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 a lovely thing to want to get down to a nice healthy weight I mean obviously that's fantastic but in terms of when you're down to the last bit and you're just really really darn obsessive about it maybe that's not super healthy but I think the other the thing that people often get confused with that is being really excited and really wow well, I guess I use the word obsessed loosely um just really into you could say obsessed about being healthy health and weight loss are two very different things you could lose weight in a very unhealthy way so um obviously now that I'm kind of towards the end of my weight loss journey I'm not really focused on weight loss I am however still and for the rest of my life hopefully uh, going to be really super focused on being healthy I want to be my healthiest most vibrant self I know that if I eat junk food standard food I feel like rubbish it knocks me and I just hate that feeling yeah. um so you know when people said oh you were you're so you're so strict with yourself why didn't you just go out and have some food firstly um, I really, I've now got to the point where I respect my body and I wouldn't want to do that. But also on another level, what there was available was vegan burger and chips and vegan pizza with like loads of cheese and it's covered in oil and stuff. So I also have no interest in that from a taste point of view. Like that would just be, I know, I, obviously I was a junk food vegan. I used to live on that stuff. So it's really strange for me to now say I couldn't even, I couldn't even have a bite of it. It would literally be disgusting. For me now, it's almost to the level where it's the same as eating meat, not from an ethical point of view. I mean, like, just the fact that I just wouldn't do it, like, and I have no interest in it. It doesn't even cross my mind, like, oh, would I have a bite of that burger? It's like, no, why, why would I? Um, and I've got to the point where I love my own food so much, um, my own healthy food so much, that I wouldn't want to have a meal compromised by eating some rubbish vegan burger when I could instead be eating my own delicious meal. Like that chili that I had was so darn tasty. Um, so anyway, I, people could see that as, uh, you know, super strict and super obsessive if they want to. It depends how you look at it really. But I'm super focused on health and and I'm not interested in that anyway. But anyway, I just thought it was an interesting thing to, to chat about. Um, let me know down below what your um, kind of views are on being obsessed with food i mean obviously i was chatting to my mum yesterday and she was like of course you have a different reason to be kind of you know focused on food because it is my job so obviously i do have a bit more of a focus than the average person um but in terms in terms of being obsessed over weight loss and obsessed over health i do feel like those are two wildly different things and i think when you're on your weight loss journey obviously the key focus would be to lose weight but the food that is great for weight loss is also the food that is best for health so along your journey i think you'll get to a point or i think you should get to a point where your focus switches from being about weight loss and really is about being healthy and being your healthiest self and I think if you've got that as a strong motivator wanting to be vibrant and healthy and to live for a really darn long time um, then I think it, 
it makes it so much easier to stick to this way of eating because once you've lost weight, if you then have no motivator, if weight loss was your only motivator, what's stopping you to going back and having burgers and pizzas all over again? Um, nothing really if it's just about weight loss because you could do that in moderation completely. But if you're wanting to be your healthiest self, then that's not really going to serve you, is it? So anyway, I hope that makes sense. Let me know down below what your thoughts are on uh, obsessive versus, um, you know, just focused on health. Yeah, interesting thought. Mummy, have you give them some now now? Rami's found a bug in the flower and she's feeding them a little petal. <laughs> You're so gorgeous, Rams. Back from our beautiful walk and I am diving into breakfast because I'm quite hungry, to be honest. So I'll uh, share with you my rather unusual breakfast that I'm having this morning. Basically, I'll talk you through it. So I was hunting in the fridge for my morning veggies, as I do every single morning. I never really know what combination I'm going to find. But I found a cauliflower and... I also found a really big, fat, delicious looking cabbage. So um, those two scream Indian to me. Don't know why, that's just uh, what I like to do with them. And I thought to myself, I can't really have Indian for breakfast, that's a bit crazy. And then I was like, hold on a second, I'm the queen of not sticking by the rules in terms of breakfast, lunch and dinner. So why the hell not have some Indian for breakfast? Doesn't make any sense, it doesn't have to make any sense. So I'm doing veggies in an Indian style. And I also really fancy some cake. So I really wanted some peanut butter and cherry cake. I haven't had cake in ages since we've been back. I really miss it. Um, so I thought I would I thought I would just do that. And it's a weird combination, weird mishmash, but they're gonna taste incredible and it's gonna be great. So I'm gonna do the kind of play on my cabbage thoran because of all of the cabbage. And I'm also just gonna throw some cauliflower in there for good measure. So the full recipe is over on um, in my second meal plan um and it's just oh cabbage thoran is if you guys haven't had cabbage thoran oh my god it makes cabbage magical magical i just love it i could eat a, i could eat this entire cabbage in the form of cabbage thoran i mean i could eat cabbage anyway but it's extra special um so i need to figure out i need to go and have a look at my meal plan to see the measurements because i don't properly remember to be honest so let's go and check on that real quick and then let's whip this up Oh yeah, goes without saying, if you guys like my recipes um, and you want to see them in a kind of a proper form, feel free to check out my meal plans. Um, I always have them linked down below. You don't have to check them out, but if you're interested, then feel free to go for it. I mean, obviously, I try and share as much as I can on here anyway. Um, but yeah, I also have a new meal plan coming out very soon, which I'm excited about. Um, so I'm going to start by popping some cumin and mustard seeds in a pan. I'm not going to measure stuff really. I'm going in with a tablespoon. Okay, hold on. I want there to be more. Two teaspoons, two tablespoons. I don't really know of mustard seeds. And I'm going to go in with cumin seeds. So funny. I used to hate cumin seeds when I was little. Now I just love them. Maybe about like a tablespoon. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to let this dry fry like this until it all starts to pop. And that's how you know it's ready. Okay, I did chop my cauliflower up early this morning because I was trying to be prepared, but then I had a kid crisis, so I couldn't really finish it off. But I do, I, I'm going to try and get into the habit of doing my morning veggies in the morning because it's just so much handier for when I get home. <laughs> I've also got two things of frozen garlic and some frozen ginger. Sorry about Romy's head. It does look a little bit wobbly, but there's not really much I can do about it. That's just the way she can't rise. So uh, I know it doesn't look the best, but uh, that's how she likes it. She's a bit crazy. Okay, so you can hear how we're starting to pop over here, which is fantastic. I obviously don't want them to burn, so I'm going to give, um, give them a little splash of water. There we go. I'm going to go in with my onion and my garlic. I'm also going to go in with a little pinch of turmeric as well. I never know how to say it. I always say, I always say turmeric, but that's not right, is it? It's turmeric. Oh well. Then I am also going to go in with some asafoetida, asafoetida, hing basically, which is a really funky Indian flavour. I don't even know spice, so I'm not. I'm not actually sure what it is. But got it from the Indian shop, and it's, oh, it just, it's oh, it's got a smell, but it's very special. And it just kind of whoo, takes things to the next level. But I don't think we're meant to put it in until further in the end. So I'm going to let, uh, let everything else get cooked. And then I'm going to whack it in. Okay, so in with that, I'm going to throw in my cabbage and my cauliflower. 
put the lid on with some water. No one has ever been more excited about veggies than I am about these massive pile of Indian veggies right now. I literally can't wait to dive into that. I'm more excited for this than for my cake, if you can believe it. Light sprinkle of salt. And we're just gonna stick the lid on and we'll let that cook for about, what, 15 minutes. Meanwhile, I've got some leftover shredded coconut that was just in the freezer. So I am going to, there's probably like, I don't know, like three or four tablespoons in there. Um, I am going to uh, dry fry this to make it a really lovely uh, colour and to get that fragrant coconutty thing out. Now we're going to move on to the cake portion of our breakfast. So I'm going to keep this quick and simple. So I've got one cup of oats, a nice big ripe banana. Now you guys know I don't really like to use any sweetener of any kind because it really overstimulates my taste buds and I can't listen to my hunger fullness cues properly. So the banana is going to act as our sweetener in this uh, recipe. You get half a cup of soy milk and half a cup of water. You could go full milk or you could go full water. Um, I like the nice even split because I don't need to have too much milk in there, but all water, I've tried it, not my fave. Then we've got a teaspoon of baking powder. We want a tablespoon of flax. Obviously that's gonna act as our egg replacer and our binding agent, if you will. And obviously because we're wanting this to be peanut buttery, I'm going in with some PB2. And I'll probably go for like maybe a couple of, couple of tablespoons just to like oh, get that lovely flavor going. Right, there we go. So now I'm just gonna quickly blitz this up, whack it in a bowl, put some cherries on top and then cook it in the microwave for about six to nine minutes, depending on the consistency I want, I'll let you know. Oh, my veggies are ready. Look at that. Oh my gosh, you can eat this for breakfast, guys. It's so, so, so good. So I put in the uh, hing and I also put in like two tablespoons of the coconut. I'm gonna save the rest of the toasted coconut for another day, because uh, I have more cabbage. So um, let's have a little try. Oh wow. Oh guys, oh guys, you gotta make it. Mmm. Mmm. And try and get your hands on the hing, because that is very special. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Oh yeah. Also my cake came out of the microwave as well. Look at that baby. Darn delicious. If I wanted like a frosting, I could blend up a banana with some PB2 and kind of smother that on the top, but I'm not super bothered. But if you wanted frosting, that's what I'd go for. Anyway, I'm going to go and enjoy this massive feast um, and try and do some work before Romy wakes up. First, I'm going to eat these veggies because I'm so excited about them. Mm -hmm. If you want to fall in love with veggies, try different ways of making them. Don't get stuck in a rut necessarily if you're not enjoying them. Try something like this out. Okay, so I've eaten loads and loads of veggies, but I wanted to have a quick taste of this cake. I've already dug into it a little bit, Whoa. mainly because Romy woke up and she saw the cake and she wanted to eat some. Here you go, Romy. Whoa. You want another cherry? Do you love the cherries? There you go, baby. But yes, I don't know if you can see how incredible that is. So anyway, I think this is going to be Romy's lunch. I'm also going to give her some of my veggies as well. Um, and then I'm going to take Romy um, to, into the garden and we're just going to have a lovely play. Okay, so I've had some and I've taken out some for Romy. So now I don't count calories, but I do have in my head how much I think I'm going to need. So one cup of oats usually does the trick for me. Um, so I'm going to bulk this out a little bit with some more cherries because I'm really, really enjoying the cherries. So is Romy. I think we're just going to have all of the cherries because um, why not? Why not? And I'm also, and I'm also really, really in the mood for some frozen mango. So I'm going to chuck in loads of frozen mango as well. I just wanted to show you how much Romy is enjoying these morning veggies. <laughs> she is just like shoveling it in. The nice rams. Ready? Let's go. No matter what fitness level you're at, it always, when you push yourself, it always feels just as hard. I'm trying to get into a Zen Buddhist location in my mind. 
Okay. Oh. 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 Anyway, yeah, in the garden, having a bit of fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, it does make you think that, you know, those people you see at the gym who've got like massive muscles, their workouts aren't easier for them because they have already got the muscles. They're just pushing themselves that much harder so that they feel the same way that we do when we do a bit of working out. So everyone's pushing themselves the same amount if they want to move forwards. It's just everyone's kind of starting at a different level. So anyway, it's interesting to think. No one's got it easy. It's just a matter of how much you want it. Ooh, we are hot babies. It is boiling outside. So we've come in to make Romy some lunch because she was getting super hungry. So for Romy, remember we bought that pepper. So I'm going to give Romy some pepper because I don't really like peppers. Neither does Abe. James likes them, but I do the cooking, so therefore I don't make them. Um, but Romy does really like them. So I'm going to start getting into the habit of at least getting her a pepper. So we're just going to saute some up. She still doesn't have loads of teeth. Um, so I've tried giving it to her raw, but she's struggling to do any proper chewing. So we're going to saute some up. And Romy's going to have my leftover sweet potato um, peanut butter African stew from yesterday. I tell you what, I had loads, well not loads, I had a good chunk left in the pot. And then James, after I went to bed at like midnight, he snaffled an entire bowl and he was like, oh my God, that was so good. He loved that meal. So anyway, that's how you know it's a good one when James e likes it. So this is my leftovers from yesterday. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly heat this up. I've got some rice as well and some peppers. That'll be Romy's lunch. I'm not super hungry yet, but I'm thinking of just ma like no. making a massive gigantic chocolate no. smoothie for when I am hungry. Um, oh, careful little rum rum. Banana, some of that frozen cauliflower again. Keep it it simple, just like a nice kind of slushy thing. Right, should we warm this up, Roms? But we are gonna get started on dinner, no. and tonight for dinner, no. we are making, Romy, can you say this? Can you say, can you say gnocchi? No. <laughs> <laughs> doing homemade gnocchi, never done it before. I might need to do some research to figure out how the heck to do it. If I had chickpeas, I would try and squeeze chickpeas in there. Next time I have chickpeas, I am gonna squeeze some chickpeas in there, but we don't have any at the moment. <laughs> so I'm gonna see if I can do oat flour gnocchi. Let's see. Okay, so it's gnocchi time. So I've got loads of these beautiful potatoes. We are going to try and do a decent sized batch. So I'm trying to think about how much food everybody needs. That looks pretty good. But I guess you can't have too much mash though, can you? Right, okay, we're gonna go with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, ten little kind of what medium y potatoes. Um, first we're going to turn this into some mash. So let's do it. I'm just boiling potatoes whole in some water, so that's gonna be a little while. But in the meantime, I'm gonna whip up this oat flour. I've got three cups of oats in here just because I don't know how much oat flour I'm gonna need, and I wanna make more than I think I'm gonna need. Okay, so our potatoes are boiled all the way through so that you can push a fork in it and you know it's nicely done. Right, taking a break from gnocchi, it's 2.30. I'm gonna make myself a quick little smoothie. I'm gonna do a chalky mint smoothie. I've got some fresh mint in the garden. So I'm gonna go in with two bananas, some cocoa powder, um, and I'm also gonna go in with some cauliflower. Let's just see what happens. I'm not really quite sure, but I think it's gonna be delicious. Right, two bananas to give us all that yummy sweetness again. You all right, Ram? Yeah. What's up? Right, about like, let's say, half a three quarters of a cup of cauliflower. Splash of vanilla. I'm gonna use some cocoa powder because um, I actually just fancy the flavor of the cocoa powder, to be honest. A couple of tablespoons. I'm gonna do about half a cup of almond milk. Nope, no bugs, fantastic. So that's just like, I don't know, 15 mint leaves. Let's see how that works out and we'll see if we need to add anything else to it. Ooh! Oh, that is very nice. What do you think, Roms? Mmm, right, I think we need some more ice though. Okay, so this has gone I love the texture of this. It's kind of like a no. iced pudding. Mmm. No. No. Cauliflower is really very special in here. Mm. I'm sorry if you've seen this one recently. You may see this one on repeat because it's really darn good. Mm. No. That's, one I sh that's why I want to show you guys no. these daily videos so that you can see what, um, what I eat on repeat. Oh man, that's yummy. You guys haven't tried frozen cauliflower in your smoothies. Get on it. Honestly, it's amazing. 
And obviously you guys know I would have put some beans in here if I'd had some beans. And tomorrow I might repeat this, but with some beans. Chocolatey goodness. Now, if I had some granola, I would definitely put some on here because that could be a fun topping. And remember when you're having something kind of smoothie-ish, try and like pretend to chew because it like activates all your um all your all your juices it kind of gets everything going gets your body ready to eat basically i don't remember the fancy terms for it i'm not a fancy person but i know the facts that you need to chew <laughs> i love it most youtubers like research everything that they're meant to be saying and they make sure they've got it all all you know all perfectly almost like scripted whereas uh i'm just i'm just remembering bits and pieces off the top of my head there you go babes anyway rom's and i'm gonna go enjoy, enjoy this then i'm gonna go pick up babe and then i'll have to do gnocchi when i get back okay back from the school run i am mashing up these potatoes and we're gonna do our gnocchi i'm gonna get the kids involved as well and they're gonna have a lot of fun and make a lot of mess now, obviously, this is a more labour-intensive recipe. You obviously, don't have to make stuff like this, but I thought it would be a really fun activity for the kids, to be honest. Oh, my gosh, this just looks delicious. <laughs> I just want to start eating it. Do you babies want to come and help me out? Hey, should I get your chair and Rami get your stool? Ah. Right, Rom, so this, do you want to help me do the mash mash? Mash mash. Rami want to have a little taste of mash mash. Oh. There you go, I'll pop it there for you. I want you to sprinkle, so, oh, excuse me, muffin. I want you to sprinkle some flour, oat flour, into the mash, please. So do a cup at a time, and we're gonna give it a lovely mix. Okay, fantastic. Now, look, Roms. Yeah, you wanna help mommy with the mixing? Okay, we're now making the sauce. So uh, Abe's just sticking some onion. We're gonna do celery and carrots into a blender with some water. We're going to let that water saute down in the Instant Pot and then add a few extra bits. Okay, so in here we have a full onion, two carrots and loads of celery. We're going to whip this in our Instant Pot and we're going to saute this for a little moment. This is my lazy version when I can't be asked to slice stuff. Then I'm going to add in these two and a couple of uh, cups worth of red lentils and some garlic and some bouillon and then stick it on uh, for probably like four minutes in the Instant Pot. Then, boom, done, tomato sauce finished. Um, I am letting this gnocchi stuff rest for a little while. I don't know if I've got enough flour in there, but it tastes nice. Um, I'm gonna do a little batch to see if it's worked. If not, I'll add some more flour in and then see what happens. Okay, so we have a lot of different things going on at the moment. We're doing some rolling, Abe's doing some slicing. I'm trying my best to make them look like gnocchi. But it's darn, darn tricky. Yes, there's a special technique. I think it's something to do with the back of the fork. I can't be bothered to research it. I'm going to keep them rustic. That's okay. Romy just wants to eat the mix. And so it's quite a mixed bag over here. But Abe is doing an incredible job of helping out. And he's done loads and loads of chopping, which is amazing. So there we go. We're having rustic gnocchis. But I think they look quite cute. And then Abe is laying them out all over there. We ready. have 24 Thank you so much, sweet pea. That is fantastic. Thank so you. I think, um, yeah, if you guys know how to do gnocchi, let me know. Because <laughs> I haven't got a clue. Anyway, it's just a bit of fun, isn't it? We don't have to take food so seriously sometimes. I know, and you just want to stuff it in your face, don't you, Ram Ram? Stuff it in your face. <laughs> just like that. Okay, anyway, I'll let you know once we've brought it to the boil, and I'll let you know what they look like. We have boiled the first batch and it, although it is pretty good Sarah, and it holds together nicely and it floated and everything, it. Um, it needed a bit more flour. So I blended up a couple of extra cups of oat flour and now it's much more of a sturdy dough. So we're just going to um, do the rest of this and Abe is having such a good time. He's doing a brilliant, brilliant job. Abe, you are really... Oh, Abe, you're a pro. Everyone is eating their dinner. I have got my gnocchi waiting here. James and I were just saying, we both haven't had gnocchi in ages, so we don't even know what this is meant to be like, to be honest. But I think it's pretty nice. Um, I am um, sauteing up some 
broccoli and some cauliflower from the freezer. Trying to give that a go and see what that is like uh, with some soy sauce and garlic regular style. I also did some mushrooms the same way. Here is our lovely tomato lentil sauce. And uh, I'm gonna throw all that together and see what happens. But first, I need to wait for these veggies. Okay, so this is my incredibly delicious feast. Sorry, I didn't really show you how to put it together crazy family um anyway all my garlic and uh, all of my broccoli and cauliflower there i've got two massive tomatoes got me mushrooms and hiding in there i've got loads of gnocchi with my lentil tomato sauce lovely fantastic low calorie density feast i'm going to mix some of this together not quite sure yet to kind of create a big gnocchi medley but let's have a little taste and see what we are working with. let's see this gnocchi shall we so here's the gnocchi give it a little dunk Mm, that is nice. I don't really know how firm a gnocchi is meant to be, to be honest, but mm, very, very tasty indeed. Mm, delicious. Anyway, I'm going to dig into this. 